Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. All right, our next talk is on end-to-end -end memory networks. This is presented by St. Bayar Sugbatar, and this is joint work with Arthur Slam, Jason Weston, and Rob Fergus. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, so in deep learning, we have uh, good models on certain types of uh, data structures, uh, such as we have a RNN for a temporal data. We can use a connet for spatial structures. Uh, but we still struggle with uh, some, sort, some types of uh, dependencies in the data. Uh, for example, if uh, data has to be accessed out of order, uh, also the, there's a long term, can be long term dependencies. Also, the input can be unordered set. So, on those kind of dependencies, we, the current model doesn't really work very well. Uh, let's take an example. So here we have a question answering task. Uh, so there's a short story followed by a question. Uh, the question is, where was the apple after the garden? <clears throat> so to answer that, you have to first look up apple. So that is the, la the last sentence. Now you know that Sam had the apple. So if you look the first sentence, you, you will know that Sam was in the garden at some point. So now you just have to track that Sam went to the kitchen. So the answer will be kitchen. So you can see that the optimal solution to this problem is uh, actually you're accessing the sequence out of order, way right? Out of order. And also there can be many sentences between those three sentences. So there's a long-term dependencies. So so motiva motivated by this, we come up with a model. Uh, it's a neural network model, actually. Uh, it's a, so it's a model with external memory that, has a, that can read from the memory with the soft attention. And it performs uh, multiple lookups on the memory. And it can be trained end-to-end with, -end with the back propagation. So we call our model end-to-end -end memory network, or for short, MEM N to N. So it's, a, it's actually based on an original memory network proposed by Weston, Chopra, and Bordas. So their model had a hard attention, uh, and it required explicit supervision on the attention for training. Uh, but that kind of supervision is only available for a simple task, uh, and that limits the application of the model. So our model can be taught as a soft attention version of that model. And so you can train, the, uh, so because it's a differentiable, you can train with the only supervision on the final output. So let's uh, to, uh, take a look at the model's architecture. So it consists from two modules. You have a memory module and the controller module. The inside of the memory module, you have a memory vectors. Uh, it's a set of vectors, so it's unordered set. Uh, so it comes, uh, you, put, you can put the vectors into your memory. And the size of the sets can vary. Uh, on the other hand, you have an internal state in the controller. So that can also can come from input, or it can be a fixed uh, vector. So, you, would, so you, you will use that vector first to, get, to address the memory. And in return, memory will give you a vector and then you can add that vector into your state to get the next state vector. Uh, you can repeat this process several times, uh, fix it number of times, and finally you use a decoder to get the final answer. And to train whole this, this, the whole, whole model, you only need supervision on the output. Uh, so actually, what, how are you doing the addressing in the memory? Let's, explain that. So as I said, there's a memory vectors in the memory. Uh, and there's an addressing signal coming from the controller. And it's actually a state vector of the controller. So what we do is uh, we first take a dot product between those two. 
that will give you some similarity scores between the, those two. Uh, we passed that through a softmax to get the probability distribution over memory locations. And those uh, numbers can be considered as uh, attention weights or soft addressing. Once we have that, we compute the weighted sum of the memory vectors using those weights. So that will be the output of the memory. So that will go to the controller and added, uh, will be added to the current co uh, controller state. So that's how the module works. That's it. Uh, uh, but so far, I didn't explain how the memory vectors, vectors are, uh, how we put things in memory. OK, so there's many ways to get the memory vectors. Also, it will depend on your input. So for example, if I had the image, you can put the image features as a memory vectors. But here I will give an example when you have sentences. So let's say we had the Sam drops an apple. That's a sentence. What we can do is uh, uh, embed each word into a vector and add them together. So it's a bag of words to get the memory vector. And that will go, to, go into your memory. Uh, but sometimes your input might have a structure. For example, uh, there could be temporal structure in your input. Like in this story, there's a three sentences, but it's ordered in time. They, so they have a time stamps. Uh, in that case, we have to include that structure into the memory vectors. A uh, simple way to do that is create a special words for the that time step, stamps, and include them into memory, uh, bag of words. So you have the special embed, time embedding in the memory vectors. OK, so that's the model description. Uh, although uh, our model can be applied to many things, let's take a question answering as an example to actually see how it works. So let's say you have a three sentences followed by a question. So we can we will embed each sentence into a memory vector. So we will have three memory vectors in the memory. Uh, we do the same thing for the question to get the controller state. Uh, then you do, uh, we can do dot product and softmax to get the attention rates. Uh, and because the first two sentences uh, had the location of the SAM, uh, it can attend those two. But because we have a time embedding in it, it can actually pick the one that is more recent one. So hopefully you'll get a high attention on the second sentence. Uh, we will do a weighted sum of the memory vectors, add it back to the controller state, and decode that uh, with the matrix. And you should get the, well, it should get the, give a kitchen as answer. OK, so obviously our model is related to the original memory network model. Uh, that model had a hard attention. That's the main difference from our model. So they, had a, they have a max instead of a soft max uh, in the memory module. Uh, so they need a supervision on that max to train the model. And you need supervision on every memory hops. Uh, another related work is a RNN search by Bakhtan et al. It's a, I encoder decoder RNN with attention, and they applied into machine translation and got very good results. Uh, so our model can be considered as an attention model, uh, but with uh, multiple hops for every output. Uh, there's, there's been other works on external memory also. So one is the stack memory for RNN. Uh, another one is a neural Turing machine, uh, which had also uh, random access memory with uh, read and also write operations. Uh, well, historically, there's been many works combining neural networks with memory. And even in the last few months, there has been many interesting works coming on the top. Coming on the top. <coughs> OK, let's go into the experiments now. Uh, first, we did experiment on a QA toy data set called Baby. It has uh, 20 different tasks. So for each task, you're given a short story. Uh, followed by a question. Uh -huh. Because it's artificially generated, it uh, has a small vocabulary and simple language. Uh, but what makes this data set uh, difficult is that all the, all, the all the 20 
tasks uh, require different reasoning. So if you look at the second example, you have uh, Brian is lion, Julius is lion, uh, Julius is white, and Bernard is green. And the question was, what color is Brian? So to solve this, you uh, know that both Brian and Julius is lion. Uh, but Julius is white, so maybe all lines are white. So if you do that induction, you can answer white. So each task does, has a different, requires a different kind of reasoning. Uh, so this is the result we got. Uh, this chart showing the number of failed tasks out of the 20 tasks. And we have two versions of the data set. The blue one is when we have a small training data, and the red one is when you have a large training data. So the original memory network uh, performs very well, but it, it also requires a strong supervision. Uh, also, if you train LSTM on the story followed by question to predict the answer, it performs not that good. Uh, if you take a R model and use simplest bag of words features, it outperforms the LSTM. Uh, but if you do a uh, uh, few tricks, you actually can get up to, uh, so you only fails on three tasks. Okay, so what are those tricks? So uh, first we replaced bag of words with the position encoding. So in the memory vector, you actually have some approximate position of the words, so you know uh, the position of the words in the memory vector. Uh, we also tried uh, removing softmax from the memory module for initial FIBO epochs. That helped also. Also, we uh, uh, tried add injecting a random noise into the time embedding. Uh, that also helped. Uh, finally, we trained on all the tasks all 20 tasks jointly, but that only helped when the training data was small. In the last graph, it shows the, it's showing the, uh, by the way, the bottom two graph is showing the mean error, not the number of failed tasks. Uh, so the last graph is showing the performance uh, when we increase the hops from one to three. So it shows that actually the number, many hops is essential for the solving the task, uh, but uh, we didn't get improvement beyond three hops. Okay, let's just take a look at the, uh, how the model solves those tasks on the example. So this uh, first uh, task, uh, the question was where is the milk? So you can see in the first hop, model attended, model attended on the first two sentences because it had the milk in it. But in the second hop, it uh, more attended on the second one because that's more recent, so it's more relevant. So now it knows that John took the milk. So in the last hop, it uh, it looks that looks up that John moved to the hallway. So it answers hallway, which is a correct answer. Uh, so next experiment was on a language modeling. So this is uh, to test if our model can scale to more complex. Uh, real world data. So we have two training data. Pentry is uh, commonly used for uh, language modeling and slightly larger text data, data set. <laughs> so for the model, uh, for controller, we have a linear layer followed by nonlinearity. Uh, but in the memory, we put each word into a memory vector. So let's say if you have uh, the sentence Jan says your model must be, and you have to predict the next word. So you would encode each word into memory vector. So you would have six memory vectors in the memory. Uh, but because the ordering matters here, you have to include the times, timing into the memory vector. And you will do several memory lookups and produce the answer. So this shows the test perplexity of our model compared to LSTM. Uh, it's just single layer vanilla LSTM. So if you can see that if you increase the hops, the performance actually gets better and uh, it's comparable to LSTM. Uh, also, we increasing the memory helps the performance. 
So we can do, we can see the attention also on, on this task. So this is uh, showing the average attention of the model on test data set. <coughs> so the y axis is a number of hops. So you have uh, six hops there, and uh, what x axis is the position of the board. On the, on the left side, you have uh, all the stored, and the right side, you have most recent board. So you can see that in the first hop, model attends on recent, most recent words, but in the next, it attends on more broad range of words. But it alternates between that two. Uh, we thought that was interesting behavior. Uh, we also observed the same behavior on the, on other, the other data set, too. So, so, so that's the experiments we've done. Uh, but currently, we are also working on several ways to extend our model. So one way was to uh, add a writing capability. So we found out that you can use the same attention mechanism to write into the memory vectors. Uh, so if you if you if you if we did that, we can actually like use it for like certain numbers, sorting the numbers. Uh, another direction was like playing games with memory networks using uh, reinforcement learning. So instead of uh, embedding time, you can uh, embed the locations. So each uh, each item will be go into uh, memory as a bag of words, but it has a location inside as a word. So it has to learn the topology from the experience. Uh, so conclusion, uh, we proposed a neural network model with external memory. It has a soft attention over the memory locations. And it can be trained end to end with the back propagation. We showed good results on toy QA dataset. And on language modeling task, we, our performance was comparable to LSTM. And we showed that our model is versatile, that it can be extended to writing or playing games. So you can actually download the code from GitHub and run those experiments by yourself. Uh, so if you're interested in more detail, you can uh, come to our posture today. So thank you very much. All right, before we take questions, uh, the Spotlight presenters are invented to uh, uh, come in the front on my right to prepare for presenting their Spotlights. So, uh, question on my right, yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Jürgen Schmidhuber from the Swiss AI lab, IDSIA. And um, of course, in the past quarter century, there have been lots of methods for uh, learning programs that control internal memories, external memories, soft attention, hard attention, and I'm sure some of them are going to mention in the um, uh, in the RAM workshop on Saturday, I think. Now, I saw that you compared your system to LSTM, but did you also compare to any of these other methods there? So we uh, we compared to LSTM only in the data uh, training in this paper. Uh, yeah, we didn't compare to the other memory module, uh, memory uh, architectures. Yeah. So I, I think there is a whole treasure of literature out there, and uh, lots of this stuff is directly applicable to questions exactly like the ones that you are addressing. But maybe in the RAM workshop on Saturday, is it on Saturday? Yes. Um, we will have lots of discussions on that. OK, thank you very much. All right. Next question on my left. Hi, great talk. Uh, this is Jen Lee from Huawei Technologies. A uh, quick question on the performance study. Um, you, you have two different data sets, 1K and 10K, and have various mechanisms and compare with CDRVAR. Just wonder um, why you mentioned that, but try to wonder uh, for the joint test of 20 tasks, why is, uh, it doesn't like, uh, behave better? Is it because of the 20 tasks are not uh, distinctive to each other, or the 10K data set are not large enough? Any insights on that? So the question is that why you get improvement on joint training? Uh, why not? Why not on 10K? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so I think it was just that our model wasn't large enough, large capacity to learn all of the tasks. Yeah, I think if we 
increase the capacity should be at least as good as uh, individual, individual training. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, ah, this is Taiman from Mind's Eye. Um, very nice. I, I want to say that I really like this, uh, this content addressable memory thing. Um, obviously, it is you know, linear in the number of facts that's being stored uh, in terms of runtime, which is fine for short, such uh, short stories as you have here. But we use content addressable memory every day when we do a web search. And then it's over billions of facts. Uh, then they use indices and hash tables and all sorts of lookups to, to make that run in a time that is uh, far sublinear to the size of the collection of facts. Do you think that at some point in the future your model could be extended in such a way to work with a, a very large collection of facts without uh, you know, scaling up the runtime linearly with that size? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, I really, uh, frankly, I don't think it can be extended to that scale. Uh, but I think we can use like hashing tricks to get the relevant, you know, get like top, topmost hundred relevant things first. Then I maybe do soft tension on those two. I think that would be a more sensible approach. <laughs> It sounds reasonable, and, and you would be sublinear, sublinear so it sounds good. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> right, so we, we do have a bit of time for last question, so last chance. Yes, no? All right, let's thank yes. our speaker. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.